What's up, Fight Fans? It's your boy Tijon, and get ready for another supercharged ride through the Wrestleverse because it's time for the rundown. All right, so this rundown is going to be about last night's Monday Night Raw episode. And man, it was a treat. So let's get right into it. You guys already know how we do this. So first up was The Miz and Cody Rhodes kind of previewing their match that happened later on during the day, dur during that night. Um, you know, same old Miz antics, disrespecting the crowd and Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes playing with the crowd, getting them all on his side. You know, just his whole welcome back party is still happening. Then we got to see Veer Mahan, who was supposed to fight Rey Mysterio, ended up, ended up fighting Dominic and beating the crap out of him again. Another squash match. You can see Dominic just gets absolutely destroyed, manhandled, whatever, sent to the hospital. Poor Dominic, man. He does not belong there. So, yeah, pretty bad. Just as soon as I saw Dominic, I knew this was going to be a squash. But next up, we had this weird showing with Damian Priest versus AJ Styles and the match just ended here. It like, there was no actual official end. It just, you see Damian perform a seance and then he gets bathed in that edge blue light that, you know, that judgment day light that we've been hearing so much about. And then he has the it eyes, you know, it really reminded me of Pennywise. Like, look at this bro, super creepy eyes. So yeah, weird, really weird stuff. But next up, so Cody Rhodes and The Miz then fight next. And um, Seth Rollins comes out, I guess, just to watch. It was kind of weird. It was a really long uh, walkthrough. You know how he does. And so The Miz was actually in pretty good control of this match for a good amount of time. But um, Cody Rhodes somehow slaps himself, slaps The Miz enough to get out of a figure four hold, reverses it, really was killing Miz at that point. Miz ends up um, getting destroyed by the Crossroads finisher, gets pinned all to the delight of Seth freaking Rollins, who is just on the by, by the commentators smiling his ass off. He then joins in the ring, and you know we now have a um, a rematch on our hands. He says, "You only got the best of me because of you know you were a surprise match. I didn't even know that it was going to be you, but now that I know, oh, I got you now." So now we're going to have a uh, Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins uh, two. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Next up. So backstage, Tommaso Ciampa is now finally on the main roster. He will be on Raw, but Elias or Ezekiel or whoever he is kind of spoils it. And so does Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens isn't having these antics and wants a lie detector to make it to, to show everybody that it is the same guy. There is no younger brother. This is BS. I agree, but I think it's hilarious. It's so dumb. Next though, Liv Morgan and Naomi, the second disappointment of the night. It was supposed to be a tag team championship. And instead we got Liv and Naomi. It was a pretty good match though, but that wasn't what I came to see. Liv almost pulls it off again and sneakily almost gets like this counter pin on Naomi. Naomi isn't having it though. She watched the Sasha Banks match. Absolutely squashes Liv into the point where she could not escape this pin. Gets the win, restores Sasha Banks' honor. And now next week we're supposed to get the tag team championship match. So hopefully it actually holds up this time. Next up, Bobby Lashley is in his feelings because MVP, you know, ditched him for his new love and Amos. And so, you know, he demands an explanation. MVP really doesn't give him much other than the fact that, you know, he's tired of playing the back seat. He's tired of feeling like, you know, he's not needed. Omos knows that he needs him, according to MVP. I think MVP set himself up for failure here, but you never know. Apparently they're gonna fight again. So Bobby Lashley and Omos is gonna be another rematch. So we'll see how that one goes. Next up, the EST, Bianca Belair fought Queen Zelina in a pretty entertaining. I wouldn't say that this one was a squash. It was actually pretty good. Queen Zelina, as you can see, is just so much smaller than Bianca Belair. Can't really do much, but she does her best. You know, she's able to use her, her size to her advantage, does a lot of nice technical stuff. You know, she had her in a nice little chokehold, but at the end of the day, it's still the EST. She's still way bigger than you, and she's gonna crush. And she like power lifts her here and then hits her with this devastating KOD and gets the pin. 
Next, then all of a sudden, Sonya Deville comes out of nowhere, and Sonya is like, since you know you're you're the best, it's time to prove it and sign this open um, contract for anybody to fight you. And then as she's going to, um, I guess, announce her future opponent, she just straight up demolishes Bianca Belair, beats the crap out of her, and announces that her next opponent will be her. And who's surprised by this, man? If anybody's going to abuse their power to put themselves in a good position, it's going to be Sonya Deville. But it should still be a pretty decent match because Sonya Deville is actually a pretty good wrestler. So nice little surprise. It should be fun. Next, we see Nikki A.S.H. clearly got a demotion because now she's going after the 24-7 championship. Poor Nikki A.S.H. Maybe this is a sign that maybe you should start changing your character. It sucks that you're in there because you were actually pretty entertaining. But next up, look at that face. You got Otis and Chad Gable fighting RK Bro. They desperately needed a win and unfortunately they did not get it. Randy Orton demolishes Chad Gable with an RKO and gets the easy pin afterwards. So Alpha Academy is on a serious slide, man. I don't know what they're gonna do, but it's like I said earlier, man, it's looking like the end of Alpha Academy and I am hurt about it because man, they're so fun to watch. But after that match, the Usos come out and you know, as foretold by Roman Reigns, they're coming for that unification for the tag team titles. But the Street Profits aren't having it. They tell, they tell the Usos, get in line. So they get to arguing and then Randy Orton becomes a matchmaker for the night and has them duke it out for the contender match. And it was a really dope match. You see Montez Ford get jiggy with it after jumping over, you know, the ropes like he normally does, slamming into everybody. But the Usos were just too much. What can I say? They're diabolical. They're very smart when they're in that ring. And they end up getting the win, pinning Montez Ford. And they are now up next to get to that title. One step closer. Now we have a title unification match on our hands. Do I think it's going to work? Absolutely not. But, you know, prove me wrong. I just don't think that they can handle what Raw Tag Team, um, what RK Bro for one has. But I don't even think that, I think that was BS that they beat the Street Profits, honestly. But, you know, they got to make it interesting. They got to make the stories juicy. But that's all I got for you guys. That is your Raw Rundown. If you like what you see here, don't forget to leave a like, comment, share, subscribe to Take It To The Ring. Follow us on all social media. You know the drill, all that. And until next time, guys. Oh, we're doing shoot session today. So catch us at 1 p.m. But until then, guys, it's your boy T-John. Keep it real.